Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to show off a very neat tool called Visual Calculus, which lets us find areas of curved shapes like traditional calculus, but in a much more geometric way. We'll start with a motivating example. Say we have two circles which share a center, with radii little r and big R, respectively. What's the area of this shaded region, this annulus, between them? Well, it's going to be the difference in areas of the two circles. So the area is pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. Or factoring, that's pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Hang on, that's two squares in a geometry problem. That just cries out for Pythagoras. And sure enough, we can find a right triangle here, using a tangent segment to this inner circle. If we call this side length A, then by the Pythagorean theorem, this area is going to be pi A squared, which means that the area of this annulus here is going to be the same as the area of a circle whose radius is the same as the length of this tangent segment. Okay, that makes sense algebraically, but I promised you something more visual. What's really going on here? Well, we could define our annulus not by its two bounding circles, but instead by its inner circle and the associated collection of tangent segments then the annulus is just the region swept out by all of those tangents. And we don't even need to define this outer circle, that just falls out for Frey. And that shape looks a lot like the aperture of a camera. And if we were to squeeze it shut, so contract this circle to a single point, we would end up with a circle like this one, where all of these tangent segments have been clustered together at a central point. And the boundary for this shape is going to be a circle, whose radius is one of these tangent segments, and so must has the same length. And these two shapes are made up of all the same pieces, namely the tangent segments, so they must have the same area. Which brings us to our main result for today. The area of the tangent sweep, where we're sweeping a tangent along a curve, is the same as the area of the tangent cluster, where we're clustering all those tangent segments together at a point. This result, known as Mamikon's theorem, is a really powerful tool for finding areas. Let's try out an example. Imagine there's a child walking in a line, dragging a toy on a string behind him. Then he sees something exciting off to the side and turns 90 degrees to chase it, with the toy following. Then the child's path will be a right angle, so it'll look something like this. And the toy will follow a curve like this one, known as a tractrix. If we call the length of the string A, then our question is, what's the area between the two paths? If we wanted to solve this with traditional calculus, it would be a huge pain. First, we'd need to set up a differential equation. In this case, we get dy dx is negative y over the square root of a squared minus y squared. And then we'd need to solve this to get something horrible. In this case, x is a times the inverse hyperbolic secant of y over a minus the square root of a squared minus y squared. And notice that we're solving for x here because it turns out there is no nice form for y. And then we'd need to integrate this whole monstrosity, and that's going to be an improper integral because this goes off to infinity. And all around, it's a pretty bad time. Thankfully, there's an easier way to get there. If we draw in the string at some moment in time, 
then notice that the toy is moving in the direction of the string. After all, it's being pulled. And so this segment must be tangent to the curve. And if we draw in a bunch of these segments, we can see that they sweep out the entire area underneath it, which means that this area that we're looking for is a tangent sweep. And by Mamikon's theorem, the tangent sweep has the same area as the tangent cluster. So if we bring all of these tangent segments together at their top point, well, it starts out with a vertical one, and then down here we've got this. And notice that all of these segments must have the same length, since the string isn't getting any longer or shorter. So this must be an arc of a circle. And it goes from vertical down to horizontal in the limit. So we end up with a quarter circle whose radius is the length of a string. In other words, the area is going to be one fourth pi a squared. In fact, we never used our assumption that this was a sharp angle. If instead the child had turned that 90 degrees a little bit more gradually, again dragging the toy behind him, then this would still, by the same logic, be a tangent sweep with this as a tangent cluster. So the area would still be 1 fourth pi a squared it doesn't actually matter what path the child takes. That's a really cool result, and it's one you can't get with traditional calculus, where you need to know something about the path. It shows just how powerful this visual calculus can be. So far, we've only looked at tangents of constant length, but it turns out we can let the lengths vary, too. To see what I mean, let's look at the cycloid. It's the curve we get when we roll a circle along a line, and we trace out the path of one of the points on its circumference. So our cycloid will look something like this. Once again, we want to find the area under the curve. Actually, we're looking at tangents which are going to be outside, so it'll be easier to find the area above the curve. So let's draw a rectangle around it and find the area of these two regions. As before, the regions are swept out by a collection of tangent segments. And they aren't all the same length, but that's okay. By Mamikon's theorem, the tangent sweep still has the same area as the tangent cluster. So what do we get when we bring all of these tangent segments together? Consider the circle at some point in its rotation. By definition, the point we're following, P, lies on the cycloid. And the tangent, PA, is in the direction that P is moving at that instant. As we've seen in a previous video, the point of contact with the ground, B, is the center of rotation. That is, at this moment, P is rotating around B. And the motion of a rotating point is perpendicular to the direction to its center. So PA is perpendicular to PB. And now we have a right angle inscribed in a circle, which means the two endpoints, A and B, must be at opposite ends of a diameter. And B is at the bottom of the circle, it's on the ground, so A must be at the top, which means the tangent at P passes through the top of the circle. By the same logic, that's true at every moment of the rotation. 
So whether the circle is here or here or here, the tangent at P passes through the top point of the circle. And this diagram is getting a little bit cluttered, so let's look at just the circle and the tangents down below. We get our cycloid from a full revolution of the circle. So P starts at the bottom and makes its way around the circle. And along the way, each tangent segment goes from P through to the top point of the circle. As P goes around, it gives us every possible tangent segment. And it fills out this circle. So the tangent cluster has the same shape as the rolling circle, and thus has area pi r squared. And by Mamikon's theorem, the tangent sweep, which we said was the area above the curve, has the same area as the tangent cluster, so it's pi r squared. And remember, we really wanted the area under the curve, not above it, so we need to subtract this out from the area of the rectangle, which is the diameter times the circumference, so 4 pi r squared which gives us a total area under the cycloid of 3 pi r squared. So, to recap, what have we learned today? If you have a region swept out by tangents to a curve, we can bring those tangents together at a point without changing the area. That is, the tangent sweep and the tangent cluster have the same area. This result, Mamikon's theorem, is a really powerful tool that lets us find areas for complicated regions, even when traditional calculus can't. And I think it shows us some really beautiful geometry along the way. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.